or you look at the history of physical education, right? Because people, there are plenty of people that believe that people started exercise 40 years ago. Uh, and uh, what do you find 40 years ago? Jane Fonda, aerobics. Jogging. Arnold, Forrest Gump, jungi, jogging, <laughs> whoever started the, 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 the jogging uh, craze. Right. And, and bodybuilding. Right. Schwarzy and, and other guys that were uh, pioneers of this trend and, and, you know, big, 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 big muscles. All right. Uh, so if you're a woman, you do aer aerobic lose weight, get fit, get thin, and then you fit. Uh, if you're a man, you'd never do that. No, no, you just lift weight, get big, you, you fit. Uh, and to others, okay, I can run 20 kilometers, I can run uh, uh, 100 miles, all right, I'm fit. Right. Uh, so everybody's got their own conception of fitness. All right, good. Fitness can be anything. It's a, it's a rag bag of a, a multitude of, of, of trends and, and concepts and... and and personal preferences and and, uh, and uh, cultural uh, influences and everything. Now, if you look at the past, how did people used to exercise for centuries, for millenniums? You know what they used to do? Work. They used to run. They used to walk. They used to balance. They used to crawl. They used to climb, they used to lift and carry and throw and catch stuff and swim and, and fight and do self-defense stuff, right? If you look at the history of physical education in Europe, it starts, uh, it's, it starts the early stage, it's just after the, 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 the end of uh, what's called the Dark Ages, uh, you know, after the big plagues and everything and, uh, you know, because of... Uh, well, Christianity completely dismissed the body. It was all about, you know, the, the afterlife. So, therefore, you had a body, you were a sinner. Um, I'm not saying anything wrong. It's just an observation. That's not the case anymore uh, today. But that, that used to be, you know, in Europe, uh, people used to, to you know, uh, like uh, brutalize themselves because they, 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 there was a hatred of the body. And then finally, with what's called the... Renaissance, the, the Renaissance, I think. Right. Uh, and people start to have a new uh, uh, interest for the body, and then they start to exercise. Right. And um, they did it with simple means, with no machinery, no gimmicks, no gadgets, no uh, equipments and DVD. Well, no like a modern industrial equipments and DVDs and, and, and <laughs> that. They did it in very simple. But not simplistic, very simple, they're practical ways. So they would do all these early gymnastics and early calisthenics. The thing is, what used to be called gymnastics and calisthenics back then was not what we call gymnastics and calisthenics today. Right. Right? Now calisthenics today, it's about doing a flag on the pole and things like that. You know? Good. It's it's great. Again, it's movement. I'm not saying anything bad about it. I'm just saying that it's a little limiting compared to what calisthenics used to be. Uh, gymnastics today, it's about, you know, uh, super aesthetics movement. It's beautiful. It's powerful. All this is great. Again, I'm not saying anything negative about it. All the opposite. But I'm just saying that it didn't used to be just about how it looks. It used to be about practical, adaptable movement. It used to be about physical competence for the real world. It used to be about physical education for young people, for soldiers, for or uh, whoever wanted it and needed it to be ready for life. They used to train for life. Right. So right. when did we go wrong? We start to go wrong um, in the in the seventies, where the new big trends and all the marketing gimmicks and everything, TV helping the the the, the emergence and and the fast spread of new trends helped a lot. And then you could sell a lot of things to people. It's not about, hey, I'm just doing bodybuilding, I'm just doing aerobics. No, no, no. You're going to buy the books, you're going to buy the, the, back then would be the, the, uh, the cassettes, the, the, the video cassettes, and, and, and then uh, the equipment, and then the, the machine. The master and the ab rocker. Yes, and then all the, the proteins and <laughs> the supplements and the whole industry, all right? 
It's driven, the whole thing is driven by money. That's it. It's driven by big corporate with their interests that are washing your brain as they all do because there is not one conspiracy. There are plenty of them. And whoever has interest in keeping you in your ignorance so that they can money make money off your back and off your ignorance are going to keep you there. They're going to keep putting all this on the internet, on TV, on the radio, um, in the magazines for you to have these kinds of expectations. And when you have these kind of expectations, then you want to buy whatever goes with it so that you can get there. Right? So that's business. The reason why we are in this state, the reason why people believe that being fit, it's just about doing some, some cardio on a treadmill and some uh, uh, muscle isolation drills uh, using machines. Because that's the way 95, 99, I don't know, people believe fitness is. It's because of money. Don't forget the protein shake in there, right? Yes. <laughs> and what I am trying to do and what a few of us in this industry are trying to do is to turn this upside down and to get back to fundamentals. And what are fundamentals? It's movement. So I'm talking about natural movement. Um, uh, you know, uh, Ido is talking about uh, you know uh, general movements and and, and it, it's and um, CrossFit. It, you know, you may not agree with whatever some people, but they're doing a great job also at having more and more people practicing practical movement, more practical movements, more more useful movements, more more. Uh, trying to develop a greater uh, physical competence that is useful in the real world. So CrossFit does that. I do that. We do that with MoveNet. And, uh, and a few of us do it. But even with the growth of our uh, respective um, uh, systems, it's still a niche. Right. Because it's a niche within, um, within the, the, the population the community of people who are dedicated to exercise, which itself is a niche within the, the general population. The people who do exercise, it's what, 5% of the population? Is it really that small? In the US, all right. And within this 5%, the people are gonna exercise in, uh, in more practical ways that's gonna be more movement-based. That's what, 5% of the population. Right. All right, so that's still a freaking niche. Yeah, and, very tiny. And what I believe is that instead of being a niche, this kind of approach to, uh, to physical training, to, to physical development, should be, man, it should be, taught in, it should be taught in schools. Every little boy and girl right now, this morning, today, tomorrow morning, they're going to go to school. She should not have 10 minutes of recess in a in a miserable uh, uh, schoolyard, with, sometimes with barbed wire around it, right. and they're going to be on their cell phones or the smartphones and iPads, they should be moving, and they should be moving naturally. They should be moving in practical ways. They should be doing some form of athletics, and then you would have a revolution of a night. Then you have people that would be, you have young generations uh, that are empowered, that are healthy, that grow, that grow strong, but it doesn't happen. And why is that? Because we're brainwashed. Because we're really stupid, man. Because we believe in it. it, it because we are we're mesmerized by TV and magazines and, and, and all the bullshit that's in, in there that's just, just designed to keep us in our ignorance so that we're good, compliant consumers. Right. That's what it is. That's deep. I like that, Arwan. Yeah, thank you for sharing the truth and your passion with us like that. I really think that's fantastic because it's true. There's so many people just being blinded by program after program and nutrition after nutrition, and they just don't even master the fundamentals, which, like you said, are movement, eating real food, you know, experiencing their life, not having to, to focus on listening to what other people have to tell them, but listening to their own bodies as they move around. Props, props to whoever is 
doing something to educate themselves and to be a healthier person, a stronger person, a fitter person, a more educated person, a better person, props to whoever does at some point in their lives or their whole life uh, something in that direction. Props to, to whoever is at least questioning what is seen as supposedly normal and trying to improve themselves because these people are the heroes of modern times. The people who are who are putting some of their mental, physical energy in being healthier, in being better, right? Instead of sitting on their ass and and the people who, who've never ever questioned the validity of their normal lifestyle are the people who are going to question the validity of yours the moment you change it. Right. Because you're trying <laughs> to make healthy your lifestyle. <laughs> That's it. All right. So they, we, we are a minority of people who are trying to live healthy in a, in a, in a profoundly sick society. Right. It's, it's like a... Uh, it should be like a brotherhood or something. It's like a, a sisterhood, and it's like it should be a community of like everybody, uh, you know, John Hands, and and uh, and we are basically saving the world from this madness. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Hey, well, I'm a hero. You're a hero, and all these people doing going even going to the gym sometimes doing stupid fitness drills. In some ways, they're a hero because they're trying to at least. Even if it's for a week, for a month, they're trying to be better, they're trying to prove themselves, to move themselves, and hopefully, so, at some point on their on their in their way on their way, and uh, at some point of their quest, they will find something that makes sense, that is a system, or that is a philosophy that is meaningful, that 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 is going to be again not something they just do and have to do or have to do, but something that becomes an expression of who they are. And movement in that sense, again, is a very powerful gateway. That's fantastic, Erwin. Well, you shared a lot of cool information with us, um, some really interesting thoughts on, on fitness and culture. I'm wondering if you want to share with us how people can learn more about you, any of your particular programs, how people can learn more about MoveNet, about your natural movement. Yeah, uh, please don't try to learn anything about me. Just learn about yourself, and that's the most important. <laughs> and uh, we, I have designed this tool, which I call MoveNat, M-O-V-N-A-T, so that people can learn the tool, learn the techniques, learn the principles, uh, so that they can use it for themselves um, and with their friends and neighbors and whoever uh, they want to uh, invite to the movement and so that they can better themselves and they can experience themselves better. Um, that, that's what it is about. So, um, yeah, please learn about MoveNet, learn about other movement systems and learn about yourself and then share it with the world because we, brothers and sisters, seriously need it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time, Erwan. I really appreciate you sharing this with, the, with our community. And I, I think a lot of people who are watching this and listening to this are going to take this to heart and really start thinking about how they're approaching their training and what they're doing to help themselves out and hopefully help others out as well. So thank you. Thanks to you too. Thanks, Tyler. Take care. And everybody out there, take care. <laughs>